Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to go. There's a large mass of foliage right here. So before I go to that, I'm going to suggest some foliage that's going to be behind it here. Maybe a little bit more earthy right in here because there's the Perry Water Garden. It's just full of these water lilies. So what we're going to do is we fill that in a little bit. And now this, uh, as we look at our picture, this is a very cool bluish green. It's a very bluish green. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take some white, take some raw sienna. We're going to take this terra vert and a little touch of blue. And we're going to start with a fairly bluish green. And that's going to be a fairly good color that we're going to lay in here. And it's going to become the base for these purple top plants that are in this section right here. I'm going to go a little bit, bit bluer, a little more of the terra vert, a little raw or a little bit burnt sienna. And we want to remember that there's a kind of an edge. There's kind of an edge to this. And this edge kind of comes along about here. So I'm going to try to include a, a, an appreciation of where that edge is. Maybe get it a little bit darker with some blue and a little more burnt sienna. Get that a little bit darker along that edge. A little bit of raw sienna here. Now I'm going to make it burnt sienna and some blue to make it even darker. And this is going to be my, my reflection that's coming off here. That got a little bit too dark, so I'm going to lighten it up slightly. A little more raw sienna here. There we go. That's a good color right there for our reflection. I'm going to try to show the reflection of that tree back there or those two trees back there. This has to be right straight below those, those trees. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to soften the edge between the, the uh, edge of the water and the reflection so that it's not clearly defined. And there you go. Do thou likewise. What we're going to do now is we're going to put this corner in. We're just going to make some scribbles uh, informing ourselves where this stuff is going to be. So there's a couple of things besides that that we're going to do. I'm going to take some, a little bit of cadmium yellow, some turquoise, and some raw sienna. This is going to be the warmest color that we're going to put into our painting and we're going to put it down in this corner. We're going to put it a little bit of a darker green underneath it. Now before we put the uh, a little scribble of the leafy um, uh, water lilies in there. We're going to go back to our mop and in the water, not up here in the mountain, but in the water, we're going to start, we're going to do that same kind of short little vertical stroke that we'd used in the sky. 
We're going to use that short little vertical stroke. Just maybe three quarters of a half inch to three quarters of an inch long stroke. And then it's going to come in here and it's going to, we're going to have a transition. Now I'm going to clean the excess off my brush. Now we're going to have a transition into the water. Okay. We're also going to do that on the reflection here. Short little vertical strokes. And notice that I'm holding the brush almost perpendicular to the painting. This is the only, uh, one of the very, very few times that I will do this as far as having a brush, holding it like an ink pen or a pencil. This is one of the few times that I will do that. Usually I'll hold the brush this way. It has more versatility. But here we're going to use it perpendicular. And now very light strokes. We're going to soften some of these strokes in here. Just to kind of get them into the painting. Okay, do thou likewise. And then we're going to get into our water lilies. I'm going to soften that edge right there a little bit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done with our preliminary here. We do want to put a suggestion of some of those leafy um, water lilies in here with the water lily pads and whatnot. So we see that. Now, with this other picture that we have, we see some of the colors. This is a close-up. These are really strong greens. So what I'm going to do, if we take a look at my palette here, I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and some turquoise and some raw sienna, and I'm going to get a very vivid but yet earthy green. And we're just going to, now I'm going to hold my brush flat and we are going to just go in with somewhat of a hammer stroke. Somewhat, what I call a hammer stroke. And we're going to put some of these little lily pads in here. Now, I did these real green ones right here in the front, but as we go further back in space, we're going to want to add a little bit of blue to it to help send them back in space. We might need to put a little white with a little blue to lighten them up a little bit. Now there's some accidental things that take place when we do that hammer stroke. There's a few accidental things that take place. Some of that orange comes through from underneath. That's all right. That's okay if that happens. So what we're doing now is we're setting leaves into the water that we'll be able to build on next time. Now there's also a few leaves that are over in here that are kind of interrupting in here. So we'll put some of these leaves here also. just to break that edge of the water up slightly. And we will be putting extra colors in here. There will be more colors going in eventually. But this is setting the stage. Okay, to kind of bring this to an end for our first sitting, we're doing a, our interpretation of this photograph, which is a lily pond. I'm not counting the number of trees. I'm not 
counting the number of leaves. I'm being inspired by the photograph, but I refuse to be a prisoner of it. We have laid in our sky. We've laid in our mountain in the distance. We've laid in the lay of land that's divided into areas where there's other ponds. We've put in, we've laid in a reflection. We've laid in everything we need that's, uh, that's an important part of this composition. Have we gotten hung up on detail? No. This is not the time to be hung up on detail. We're going to now let this dry for a week. And when we come back, we're going to start from the back and come forward again. We won't have to do a lot of work in the background because we want the background to be kind of a silent support to what's going on right here in the front. So we will be doing some work back here. We will be doing some. But we're not going to obsess over it. We're going to dot I's and cross T's. So happy painting.